hi everyone um thanks for joining so um we've we've uh, split this up into a few different sessions so today we're going to cover um the ivr and uh, cool flow building um possibilities within uh lua nimbus so lua nimbus is our team's application you can see it just sits in nimbus here so what we're going to look at in this session is how we route calls when they come into your business so um, obviously, there are going to be a few different requirements for different organizations, whether that's routing by time of day, routing by availability, routing announcements, routing voicemails. Um, so as Mike discussed yesterday, um, some of this is possible in Teams, but really what we wanted to do is give the power to the uh, admin teams, but also the user groups, um, so team managers, so they can actually go in and manage uh, their opening hours and go in and manage their call flow. So um, I'm going to go into our workflows section here within our administration. So this is just within our team's native app. And the concept of workflows is that every uh, service or call queue that you create in Lua Nimbus will have a workflow attached to it. So this essentially governs how the calls flow when they come into your numbers. So I'm going to create a test one here. Um, and show you how this works. We can assign it to an organization unit. So this is how we uh, actually dictate and govern the role-based access. So we can assign these to different areas of the business, which means that team managers, if they have access to their workflows, they'll only have access to certain parts of those workflows. So I'm gonna create this one here and I'll take you through this uh, from scratch. So we have a nice drag and drop interface available to us and we have all sorts of activities along the left hand side here, which will allow us to design our call flow. So I'm gonna start with a fairly generic call flow here. Um, so from the top, um, a lot of the time, our customers will wanna do some time of day routing. So we can put these activities in at any order, but let's put this one right at the top here. So this will allow us to to check the opening hours set against that service um, and route the call based on that. So um, when we're open, um, so you can set your open hours and your closed hours, and you can also set these special routing periods if you need to route um, for a couple of hours between say the hours of 10 and 12, we can set up these special routing periods. So when we're open here, um, we might wanna go down to uh, an auto attendant. So the input customer here will allow us just to take a DTMF input via the customer's keypad um, to decide how they want to go. So this is equivalent to your auto attendant in Teams. Here we can use uh, text-to-speech. So we can use cognitive services here for, for our text-to-speech. So we can choose from over 100 different languages here, lots of different accents. Um, so we can choose our text-to-speech engine. Or if we would prefer to actually upload an audio file, um, we can upload any audio file here via our resources. So you can choose whether you use text to speech or whether you actually want to record your own uh, greetings. We can also set some information here around the timeouts of these uh, inputs. And then down here is where we start setting out these different options. So um, I might say, okay, option one is uh, customer service. Um, that's DTMF input one. Uh, option two is going to be for reception. And then option three is going to be for, uh, let's say, sales. Okay, so I can set out as many of these as I like. Uh, I can also define what happens if they uh, enter a wrong input. So I can just send them back to this input again or play them a message at that point. So every eventuality we can set in this uh, drop down. So now that I've set those different inputs, I now have these options and I can decide where these go. So here is where it would be a good place to use the, the transfer activity. So at this point, I can then transfer the call and it says transfer is really just moving the call um, to another service. So this will allow us to move that call to another Nimbus service, which would then follow its own routing pattern, as I can see here. So I'm going to send the customer service off to the UK contact center here. Um, the reception will come to in a minute, but the sales team, I'm also going to push that off somewhere else. So I could just transfer that to another service, but we also have a couple of other transfer options here. I could transfer this to an external number. Okay, so that could just go completely out of my team's environment or to a specific user or to a custom parameter. So that custom parameter transfer would allow us to look at a CRM account manager, for example, for that incoming caller and then transfer to the account manager in the CRM as an example, but we'll come on to that more in our CRM integration video tomorrow. So I'll just hit service there and select another one. 
So those two options, customer service and sales, are going off to different services. And then when we're ready to send that call to a group of users, all we need to do is send it to the queue here. Okay. So when we send it to the queue, we have a few different distribution options. So this is what's how the call is going to be distributed once it hits the queue. So at the top one, broadcast, that just means it will ring everybody at the same time. Okay. So anybody that's logged in and available in that queue will um, we'll get the call, everyone will get it at the same time, it's just first to answer. Direct conference here is longest idle. So that basically means it will go to the person who's been off the phone for the longest amount of time. So that's probably your fairest distribution method. And we also have a pickup option, which will mean that the users can manually pick the calls out of the queue in any order that they like. So I set the distribution type. I can then also set the Rona timeout. So this will um, determine how long it rings each user before moving on to the next user. So here I might say, okay, I want to ring each user for 20 seconds. And then if they don't answer, go on to another user. We can enable a queue timeout here. So I might say, okay, after three minutes, um, I'm going to time that out. The playlist will allow us to decide what that person listens to while they're waiting to have their call answered. Using our playlist function here, we can combine different audio files. So this isn't just going to be the same audio file on loop for three minutes. This can be a welcome message combined with some music or a marketing message, and then might go to a comfort message. So you can actually combine different audio files there. So they're not just listening to the same message um, for, for, for the time that they're waiting. So I've now set my queue um, information here. So I could just send that call straight to the queue now. So that will just go straight to the reception queue. Alternatively, before we send that call to the queue, there are a few different checks we can do there. So this will allow us to put some more intelligence into this routing. So um, the most simple one here is availability-based routing. So what this is going to do is it's going to check whether there are any users available in this queue. So here we're using the presence information we have from our Teams users, and we're understanding whether they're logged in and out. So if we say we're only going to send a call to this group of users here if we know there's somebody directly available and ready to take a call. If there's no one available, i.e. there's no one logged in, um, then we can actually decide a completely different call routing path for that option. So we might say, okay, if there's no one available, we actually want to send that call to the customer service team instead. So we're using uh, the presence information there to improve that caller experience and making sure that these uh, callers aren't just sitting in a queue where there's no one available. So that's one check we can do before sending the call to the queue. We can also do a check around available users. Okay, So we can say, um, we can take this a step further and this will help us load balance the live calls. We can say we're only going to send a call to this group of users if we know there's more than five users available. And if we know there's less than five users available, let's send that call um, off somewhere else. So that will allow us to get a bit more customized around how, how many calls we want waiting in each queue if we do have a particularly high call volume. And a similar idea here with uh, queue position. So this will allow us to route on their queue position. So we might say, okay, if somebody comes into the queue and they're greater than 10th in the queue, we then want to transfer that call somewhere else, or we want to um, send that to a voicemail or send it to an, an announcement or, or whatever we might want to do with that. This will also allow us to actually, at this point, um, record the position in queue as a parameter. Okay, so we can just um, take their position in queue, um, and then we can use this position in queue in our announcements here. So within our announcements, we can um, Again, use text to speech. So we can just type in any announcements like, okay, we can see that you're waiting the queue. Thanks for thanks for waiting. Or we can actually use custom parameters here like that position in queue. So we can then design a message to say you are tenth in the queue, for example. This announcement can then also be used to play back um, parameters from a CRM system. And we'll talk a bit about this more tomorrow. But as an example, if somebody's inquiring about the status of their order, we could pull a custom parameter from your CRM system about the status of their order. Let's say it's out for delivery. And then we can say, okay, your order is out for delivery and it's due for delivery in next Tuesday or give them a date for when it's due. So this announcement uh, activity here is pretty powerful because we can announce both text to speech, but also parameters from either a database or a CRM system. The final kind of piece to mention here is our collect information tab. So 
we might want to collect some information from the customer. Um, this might be an account number, this might be an order number, this might be a, a membership ID. So what we can do here is we can again put an announcement saying, please enter your account number. Okay, we can save that to a parameter and then we can use that parameter to do all sorts of things. So we might then want to use that parameter and then check that parameter against our CRM. And then we can say, okay, if this parameter is uh, means they're a VIP cooler in your CRM system, or they have they have a big outstanding invoice, what we can then do is we can then route based on these parameter checks. So we can use information from a custom database or a CRM system to route these calls, whether that's around VIP coolers or um, order information, or just any information that you have in your CRM system about those customers. Finally, um, just to kind of wrap this up, this example up here, um, when we're closed, we might just want to do something nice and simple, like play an announcement here to tell them we're closed and we can put in our opening hours here. Um, and then we can actually just send this to a, a voicemail. OK, so we can use the voice message um, activity there and we can say, OK, when you're closed, go to play an announcement and go to voicemail. But any of these activities that I've shown you can be put in in any order um, to really design that, that workflow yourself. And we've built this in a way that um, it's user friendly and intuitive. So um, if you do have um, team managers who want to be able to change their announcements or um, they want to be able to build a new service or a new call flow, you can allow them this tool to be able to do that yourself themselves. Very good, Dolly. Thank you very much for that demonstration. Um, I think you know you've covered you know quite a lot of features that most people use, and there's probably some other really good ones in there. We've not really had time to 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 demonstrate, but you know if you have more sort of complex requirements, please feel free to reach out to us, and we'll see if we can come up with a solution to you guys. Um, I think we'll just quickly go into the questions. Uh, Eddie's asked uh, a question: Is this product called Nimbus? And uh, we've been looking at Front Desk. Is this similar? Ollie, do you want to take? take over those questions? Yeah, I, I haven't actually come across Front Desk. Yes, this product is called Lua Nimbus. It's a Teams native um, kind of uh, customer service platform. So that goes right from kind of informal help desk scenarios right up to formal contact center. Uh, but yeah, it is specifically uh, built for Teams. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, we're coming to the end of this session. Oh, another question from Eddie. Uh, when uh, a call comes through to the IVR, can the reception agent see the presence of users out in the business? Well, um, Eddie, we're just about to do a session in 15 minutes time at 1130 uh, where we're going to demonstrate those capabilities for you. So um, please feel free. The, the link is in the chat to join that session. Um, you should have also have received that on email, but in case it's in the chat for this session, if you want to join the next in about 15 minutes time. Any other questions before we wrap up? No problem, Betty. All right, guys, we'll draw the, the uh, session to a close and thank you very much for your time and hopefully see you on the next one today. There are two more sessions tomorrow uh, at 11 and 11.30 where we're going through the CRM integration uh, demos and the uh, reporting of the application as well. So we hope to see you on the one in 15 minutes and two tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone.